A number of you were very kind to quickly send me these photos as they broke online. But it was funny because one of you, another person, responded to one of those tweets and said, oh my God, that looks like a CW costume. And I have to admit at first, when I, when I first saw this, I was like, that's surprisingly budget. But I have to say, the more I looked at it, and this happened, this, this, this realization happened quite quickly. Well, I mean, I first, my first realization was that this is clearly not the final costume, as we're going to discuss. But what I really, really like about it, and that I think is absolutely charming, is that this is an outfit that any one of us could throw together probably right now from our closets. We maybe not ha wouldn't have the same color scheme available. You know, you buy what you like. We all have the different colors that we have. I like, I actually, well, you know, it's kind of hard to find purple. Maybe after Kate Bishop, purple will make a comeback. But, you know, I think we all could probably put together this kind of a superhero costume right now if we had to. So I, I think that's a really great idea. All right, so let's talk about it. Now, speaking of Twitter, recently, some of you have been asking me, why the heck is WandaVision so popular? Why does everyone tweet about WandaVision all the time? Well, it's because Elizabeth Olsen's Wanda, AKA Scarlet Witch, and the fact she's not even called Scarlet Witch or doesn't have her headpiece, this stuff, you know, there's so much untapped potential. So I think that's a part of it. And she's so incredibly powerful, right? You're like, what's going on over there? How have we not explored this? And now we're gonna explore it for six hours. But anyway, she's also stand hardcore. Ah, certain actors you see, when they're matched just right with a character, can develop an incredibly strong fan base. Not even a fan base, it becomes a standum. I don't know if anybody uses that term. I'll coin it right now. But instead of a fandom, you get a standum. People who also have standums are Adam Driver as Kylo Ren and just Chris, Chris Evans as a person. I love the Chris Evans standum. It makes me laugh every time. It's fantastic. Uh, and it looks like Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop will follow in Wanda's footsteps. And you know who else I think is following in those footsteps? Florence Pew, 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 as Black Widow, AKA Yelena Belova. Now this is fascinating to me because Kevin Feige has tried to choose his own A-Force, but it's very different from the A-Force that fans are putting together themselves. And it just goes to show you that, well, you know, I think Kevin Feige, he's done a pretty good job with casting. Um, we're, we're gonna talk about this stuff. I think, I, I, recently I mentioned that Carol Danvers was like the only, one of the only people he cast without, a, without the assistance of a director. Uh, and she might still work out. I liked Carol Danvers a lot more in Endgame. So, and I, I, I came, I've come to really kind of appreciate what Brie Larson did, even in the original film, Captain Marvel. So I think, I think, and you know, speaking of directors, I don't think, you know, with all due respect to the directors of Captain Marvel, I don't think Brie Larson was paired with very strong directors who really helped her flesh out that character the right way. I hope that Nia DaCosta, and I suspect Nia DaCosta will. Nia DaCosta seems pretty sharp to me. I think Nia DaCosta maybe can help Brie Larson better define Captain Marvel and get her to this level. I mean, it's interesting to me that so far fans are loving the Disney Plus characters. You know, Feige, you know, you know, John Boyega infamously said, "No, ain't no one gonna Disney Plus me." But it's like Feige took all the characters that fans love, but he didn't feel was worth spotlighting in the movies, and he's put them on Disney Plus and actually given them even more time to flesh out their characters, and it's just turning out to be incredibly potent. It's just really, really a fascinating turn of events. And Yelena Belova is gonna feature heavily on Disney Plus, not only in Hawkeye, uh, has been officially reported, but my sources tell me she'll also be popping up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, now to be fair, um, again, as I said, there is kind of a fandom already for Captain Marvel. It's not at the level of these other characters, but it's kind of there, especially when she's teamed with Valkyrie. That's been very strong. I've, well, not as strong as this, but I see glimmers of where that could go. But again, it's not the same level as Wanda, Yelena, and Kate. What an A-Force, oh my goodness. Birds of Prey, also to be fair, came close, but obviously its standum was too small because it never materialized business-wise. Uh, and also, but I do think Gotham City Sirens done correctly could maybe get there. You know, I think Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman is on her way to being maybe this level because she just looks so phenomenal. Uh, and you know, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Uh, I love Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, but for some reason, she doesn't have the standum. I don't know if it's her politics maybe that may, you know, um, 
I know she's never actually really defined them, I think, that strongly. People would make assumptions because she served in the Israeli army. Uh, and then also some of the missteps she's made, like the, you know, Imagine video. And then maybe because also her character is so serious. Maybe that's what it is. You know, maybe, you know, Wonder Woman doesn't have the playfulness that these other characters can have. Which, you know, Wonder Woman's doing fine. Don't worry about Wonder Woman. It's a very popular character. But she doesn't have a stand-up. That's what we're focusing on. Kate Bishop, Haley Steinfeld's Kate Bishop, definitely has the stand -up. So let's talk about this great look at her costume, right? And you know what else is funny to me? All the set photos for this Hawkeye show look so much like a Marvel Netflix show. I think it's not only the mix of the New York City settings, but also that it's very low budget. I, I hope that it's, I mean, I, I think this is just maybe the look of the show, but it looks very low budget. Like if these characters were gonna run into the Defenders, they would totally fit, which must be very frustrating for all the talent who worked on those Defenders shows in front of and behind the camera. Now, back to the low budget thing. As I said, I don't think this is Kate's final suit. I mean, we, we had this nifty concept art, right? Now, often concept art doesn't make it to the actual movies and TV shows, but it wouldn't be this far afield. Uh, I think, you know, obviously, you know, these DC, I mean, these, um, these Disney Plus shows are going to be part of the MCU at large, and Kate Bishop will appear other places. Kate Bishop will return after the Hawkeye series, and she'll probably get a better costume at that point. They're clearly not working with any uh, organizations on the Hawkeye show. So it might not look like this concept art exactly, but I think it'll be in that general area. Uh, so she'll get something more professional down the line and something that's more comics accurate. But as I said, I found this absolutely charming that this is something that any of us could put together right now for a day of activities. I'll be like, I'm ready for fun. Uh, the circle on the arm is also maybe a foreshadowing to the circle cutouts in the final look, right? I mean, so she's like, I kind of have the cutouts, but not really. I mean, it's very, very, it's very female friendly, which I think is interesting. Extremely female friendly. Uh, where is Hawkeye's bow and arrow? I mean, he is sporting a hearing aid in the set photos, which is from the comics, but that wouldn't affect his aim. Maybe he's injured otherwise, and so he's lent his bow and arrow to Kate. That does seem to be his bow and arrow from some of the uh, other stuff that we've seen, you know, of him, of his character in the past. And she has like the same arm, you know, I'm, that might just be like standard, I don't know anything about archery, uh, but it might just be standard issue if you want to do archery, you know, but it does look very much like Hawk. So it does seem like maybe she's using his, his bow and arrow. But she's made it very much her own, and this whole look is also very Haley Steinfeld. I mean, it's Kate Bishop, but I think Haley Steinfeld has definitely adjusted the character to fit her vibe. And I think to maybe make sure she doesn't, you know, her fan, I think her fans would have liked it no matter what, uh, but it's very Haley Steinfeld. I love the arrowhead key ring. That is a really cool addition. That's new. It's very steampunk, very DIY, uh, do it yourself. And it's, it, the practicality to me is fascinating. And I wonder if maybe they'll also be realistic about having limited arrows. You know, the Hawkeye comic was very humorous. These are both very funny actors. They're very good at comedic stuff. So it reminds me of that hilarious SNL sketch. I love it so much. Jeremy Renner was a, um, uh, a guest and he was like, oh, hey, I'm out of arrows. So I'm going to go and wait back in the Quinjet. I thought that was fantastic. And of course, I love me some thumb holes. Ah, oh, we're so alike, Kate Bishop. I love you. I miss the sunglasses. I miss the purple aviators. And she isn't wearing a ponytail or a headband, and she doesn't have bangs. But she can get those things. But the attitude? That's a thousand percent Kate Bishop. That's fantastic. And why the character has been so popular and will be so popular when she joins the MCU. I also really, really, really love the boots, right? Every girl at least goes through a Doc Martin stage if they don't stick with them like Haley Steinfeld has. I mean, I had a pair. I think, I bet all of you had a pair. I also like Haley Steinfeld's physicality. She looks like a more realistic action hero and that she can not only take a beating, but dish one out as well. And on that note, in these pictures and some of the other set pics that have been floating around, she does have the bruising and the cuts made famous by the comic, and Hawkeye has them as well. They also go around with the golden retriever uh, who likes pizza and the internet also loves dogs and pizza. So this is just designed to do very well on the internet. So I think Disney Plus's Hawkeye continues to look just fantastic. I mean, it's weird that it looks so much like a Defenders show, but uh, hopefully it'll uh, up the up the budget where it needs to. I mean, hopefully this again is just an, an aesthetic. The comic that they're doing this based on had a cleaner, more modern and slicker aesthetic, which the show hasn't picked up on. Instead, it's going for a grittier look, which I do think is a better match with its two stars, to be honest with you. I think that 
Haley Steinfeld might be the Kate Bishop to Jeremy Renner's version of Hawkeye. He's very different than the comic book version, uh, who was, you know, you know, a little bit more, you know, modely. I guess you, is, you know, it's hard to describe it, but you know, it's it's very different. So I think they got a Kate Bishop that matches him. Uh, and she matches the comic. It's just great casting. I hope, Jeremy Renner, I hope he's working hard not to get totally overshadowed by Haley Steinfeld. All right, so what do you think? Especially if he can't shoot a bow and arrow. He better have some funny lines, boy, if he's just standing there. All right, so what do you think? Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.